I really thank you for inviting me here to St. Louis. I flew in yesterday all the way from sunny California, and I'm just elated to be here and all the slow and steep. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. I actually flew in from San Francisco, so I'm very accustomed to rain, fog, and all other kinds of inclement weather. But I appreciate um, wholeheartedly the opportunity to be here today and share a little bit about my story and my adventure with Black Girls Code. So, to get started, I think maybe we need to go back a little bit in time and let me share a little bit about how I got my start as an engineer. So let's go back to the holidays this time of year, 1970. And that is me there. That actually may be Easter and not Christmas, but you get the drift. <laughs> but generally about this time of year, I was expecting a couple of things that would normally be under the Christmas tree with my name on it. They may look something like this a bright pink laminated kitchen set, or perhaps one of the many toys that were identified as girl toys in the 70s, which normally were things like Baby Alive or Barbie, Ken, and, and Chrissy, of course, Barbie's friend. And that was great. And I love that because I really was a girly girl. But I also had an older brother and every year as we opened the toys and opened the wrap, I was always just enthralled by toys that he received instead of me that looked something like this. <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em Robots and chemistry sets. And I don't even know what that other thing was, but I didn't get to play with it because it was my older brother. Um, but as a girl, I was really taken by chemistry and science and I was curious but those were not the type of activities that I was directed in as a girl growing up in the 70s. So it's kind of surprising that I followed my brother into electrical engineering as a college major. Now, he didn't stay in engineering and switch to communications, but I did and received my degree. I can tell you that it wasn't easy. Um, but I did. I stuck with it. I received a degree in electrical engineering and spent the next 20 or so odd years in industry and in design and industry and engineering and IT departments. So flash for another 20 years, and this little young lady is my main um, per person in my home. That is my daughter, Kai. And like any mom, I had dreams in my head of when I had a girl of that she would be the next prima ballerina and visions of tutus and lace fluttered through my head on a daily basis. But it was not to be. Because unlike me with the frilly pink dolls, Kai did not like that. She was more into things like computers and gaming, Xbox, the Wii, the Game Boy, coding and doing World of Warcraft and spending hours upon hours on the computer doing gaming. I didn't know what to do. As a mom, I was about to go crazy and I was tired of spending every Saturday buying the next great game at GameStop. And I was like, this has to stop. We have to find a way for you to learn to be creative if you're gonna spend all these hours, countless hours on the computer. And so as any good mom would do, I set on a path to find an opportunity or classes or training for her to learn to be a creator with technology. And we found some classes, but unfortunately I found her experience to be very much like mine 20-some odd years ago. Not only was she the only girl or child of color in the class of over 35 students in her summer camp, she was only one of about five girls. And I thought, something is wrong with this picture. Because this is the Silicon Valley, and it's 20 years after I received my degree in engineering. Why are there not more women and girls taking advantage of this new and great opportunity? And th the answer I got was a bit surprising. So as I started to do a little bit more digging and searching, I found that with a very few small exceptions, women and girls were summarily absent 
as leaders in this new innovation economy. I always think I was one of the lucky ones because when I attended college, although it was only a handful in my freshman class of women in the School of Engineering, I went to school at the middle of the 80s when there was this huge rush to get women into STEM fields. So at around that time, in the end of 89, there were about 35% of women that received degrees in computer science. Well, guess what? Today, that number has plummeted. So now, less than 14 to 18% of women graduate with a bachelor's degree in computer science. For women of color, the numbers are off the charts lower than that. African Americans receive only about 3% of bachelor's degrees in computer science. And for our Latina and Native American sisters, that number is less than 1%. So I really didn't understand. It, it just, I could not wrap my head around how in this age where digital access is ubiquitous across the globe, how could women and girls of color be summarily bypassed as being seen as capable agents and participants in this innovation economy. To be sure, if we look at history, it didn't start out this way. The very first computer scientist, and I don't mean the very first female computer scientist, the very first computer scientist was named Ada Lovelace. And Ada Lovelace, with her colleague Charles Babbage, created the very first computer algorithm in 1845. But women were not only the first innovators in technology. In general, women have always been inventors out of necessity. The very first African-American woman to receive a US patent for her invention of a cabinet folding bed was Sarah Good, and that was in 1885. So, We've always been inventors and creators and innovators, but yet and still today, the image of the male geek is the predominant narrative that the US sees as a perspective when you think of a techie or an innovator or a maker and creator. Black Girls Code was founded in April 2011 to address and to redefine this dominant narrative. Our goal is to plant tiny seeds, just tiny seeds of innovation and what we think of as our daughters of invention that will give them the skill set and the confidence to create and discover the next great tech innovation. We hope that by delivering these workshops to girls from underrepresented communities and they start as young as seven, they go to 17, that will really create and change the face of technology. Our goal is to reach a million girls of color by the year 2040. And we like to say that we want to become the Girl Scouts of technology. So in only two short years, we bounded on what we like to call this learn to code movement with organizations such as Coder Dojo, Girls Learning Code, and Code.org but we still remain the only organization of our type, of, of this type, with a focus specifically on girls of color. And slowly but surely, we're changing both the face of technology and proving that girls can code and do so much more. Now, for me as a founder, I am adamant about making sure these girls do everything that they can do in tech. And they see it all because I never know what's going to resonate with which student. So we teach classes in robotics. We teach classes in web design, mobile app development, game design, and even traditional computer coding languages such as Ruby and Python. And we deliver this all in a very culturally sensitive atmosphere, which provides the support and mentorship that these girls need to thrive and grow and continue to achieve. To date, we've grown tremendously within the U.S. alone. Now, when we started in San Francisco in April 2011, we started with a very small pilot class in the Baby Hunters Point of San Francisco with only 12 girls. Today, we have over seven chapters across the U.S. in places as diverse as Las Vegas to New York, Detroit, 
I love Chicago. I did have Chicago and my hometown, Memphis, Tennessee, and of course the Bay Area. So when we first turned in our bios a couple of months ago, that was around September or so, I think our number, to Tom's point, was about 1,500 girls reached to date. But I stopped counting then, <laughs> and I think today we probably have reached close to 2,500 students across the U.S. Now, not only have we started chapters in the U.S. along in domestic, we also have a chapter in Johannesburg, South Africa, that's held over six classes in the last year and a half. Now, I think the next question is logically, why does coding matter? So as a geek and a techie myself, I think of technology and computer science as the next language. And I think everyone should learn to code. But if we really look at the numbers and the statistics, that evidence becomes even more important. By the year 2020, the U.S. Department of Labor estimates that there will be 1.4 million computing-related jobs just in the U.S. Just in the U.S. This doesn't even take into account outside of the U.S., the number of computing jobs that are going to be available. Today, computing jobs everywhere are among the fastest growing and highest paid in the economy. It's said that in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, if you throw a rock, you're hit an engineer. Now, even though this job growth has been exponential, to date, with the number of graduates going through our universities in computer science, we can only fill about 30% of those jobs. Black Girls Code was founded to fill that gap and to give these girls the opportunities to provide, opportunity, to provide for their families, their communities, and to change the trajectory of the tech innovation and, and economy. One of the things that I love to speak about when we're doing presentations like this is some of the successes we've had with the students that have come through the program so far. This student here is Ida. Uh, when she started in Black Girls Code in early 2012, she came to me and said, Ms. Bryant, I don't really know what computer programming is, and I really want to be a doctor, but I'll stay and give it a try. And I've seen her grow by taking class after class with BGC in San Francisco to become what we call one of our rock star coders. And I was really excited this year when her father called me out the blue and said, well, Ms. Bryant, one of Ida's teachers saw her showing one of her friends how to build a web page. And so now she has been asked to teach a class of her middle schoolers to create web pages, and they, she will be doing the same thing and teaching them mobile app development in the fall. Um, but she's only one example of some of the exciting things our girls are doing. Earlier this year, these two students participated in the TechCrunch Disrupt Hackathon in San Francisco, and they were the only student group out of over 2,000 software engineers and only a handful of women to create an app in the course of two days and to present it on the main stage. Now, this group of girls I love to death because they are only 10 and to 12. I think they're really 10 and 11. Um, and they recently, two weeks ago, participated in a level of coding field hackathon in Oakland. And out of over 200 students, including high schoolers that they competed against, made it all the way to the finals. So now, while we are incredibly excited about the success and the achievements that the girls in our program are able to accomplish, what gets us even more excited is that we know that girls and women are natural change agents. So if we teach one girl to code, she will teach 10 more girls to code. So there's a potential that our work will impact not just the students that come through our program, but our work has the potential to change the trajectory of entire communities. And that's what this program is all about. So as a founder, I feel deep within my heart that both great science and great art share two things in common. They both require you to take a leap of imagination into a world that doesn't exist today. So my challenge to you today as I leave the stage is to take a leap of faith with me and a leap of imagination and imagine a world in which we are able to reclaim those early images of women as innovators, as catalysts to encourage our next generation of girls and innovators. 
I challenge you to imagine a world where we give girls equal access to the skills, the technology, and the mentorship to become the new leaders, creators, and innovators in this innovation economy. And I challenge you to imagine a world in which our girls, these daughters of invention, create the change in the world and the future that we all hope to see. Thank you. <laughs>